Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, yes. Stanley. All right, coming in with Queen Sugar. I don't remember the episode, but it's called June 1st, 2020. 2020. We may not be here long because I don't think that a lot happened. This is actually building us up for something. And my, I don't want to tell y'all where my mind is going with this, but we're going to start off with the fact that a few episodes ago when we had the wedding, right? People were asking us, like, why didn't we address the fact that Blue had gotten tested, right? And I was like, I'm not going to address something that I know is going to come up in more context later. Because we knew that that was a foreshadow for something to come. And right. here it is. And this is what I think is going to happen. So Blue has gotten his results back. And he's extremely gifted. Like, I yep. mean, that you didn't need a test Very to tell smart. us that. Very smart. But what I believe is going to happen in the light of what's going on in the world in their world, our world, right. is that they're going to feel more comfortable getting him out of such a rural area. So I think he's going to end up going to D.C. DC. Yeah. with his grandmother where he can get into those schools where he's able to excel the best that he can to give his, himself <clears throat> the best chance of being the best that he can be. Yeah. So I believe that's what's going to happen. So that's why we didn't speak about it. And... I don't know how I feel about that. We saw what DC did to his mama. Exactly. Everybody ain't built for DC. Listen, <laughs> I'm from the DMV. DMV is a different kind of animal. Yeah. There's DMV and there's New York. Them two motherfuckers will break you. Oh, in Miami. <laughs> can't, they will you can't forget you. about Hot Atlanta, too, man. Oh. Hot Atlanta is where everybody go to after they don't bucked up wherever they was at. And they just trying to get their skin together. Well, we together. know some people don't got bucked up in Atlanta, too, though. That's because they ain't... Yeah, they weren't ready, ready for Atlanta. Because they were bucked up before they went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have Micah, right? Micah is like, you know what? Doing this little online thing where I'm able to just post what I feel. Just don't <clears> feel <throat> like it's enough. So, he told Charlie, listen, I just want to go to where he lost his life. And I was like, you about to go to Minneapolis? That's exactly where, where Micah go. is about mm -hmm. to go. But within this episode, we saw that Charlie was starting to have some aches and some pains. Like she woke up and her right, I think it was her right side. I hope it's her right side. Was like, she was like feeling like she had slept wrong or something yeah. like that. So I was like, okay, where are we going with this? And we're going we gonna to get there. We see that Nova has decided that she wanted to um, form a children's march. She wanted the neighborhood and the, um, everybody to know how the children felt about what they are witnessing and what they see. She had a whole lot of references to yeah. Trump, mm -hmm. getting Trump out of office, and how his rhetoric really showed us the underbelly of what we're dealing with right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's not as if we didn't know. I think, at least for me, because I'm 40... How old am I? 42? Yeah. You 42, man. Looking good. Thank you. We know that racism is alive and well, and we, we've we had our bouts with it ourselves, but we're kind of in this unique situation where we aren't our parents, where they really dealt with it. Like, we know it exists, but we've had opportunities to excel in life. Like, we don't feel like there's like this cap on us. We feel like there's a strain on us, but we feel like we can still break the ceiling with hard work and we can get there. Not as easily as some, but we can still get there. And Trump has really showed us who is the ceiling for us right. and what those people are able to do, how they feel about us and how their imagery of us keeps us at only a certain level or only keeping us at a certain comfort zone if that's how i want to put it y'all understand what i'm saying you understand what i'm saying yeah and, and i and i do like that nova said that even when trump get out the house which we already living in the reality right now is that his rhetoric is going to be gone but but the racism is going to remain yeah and that's and that's the you know dichotomy of the whole situation is like I'm proud of the win, but the biggest win is to get racism out of here. And that's the biggest win. And like I said last, like I said last week, you just don't know what to do. You don't. You don't. You, don't, you just, you know, you know, you try to pray and 
and you know lead the lord and you know do the marches and all that stuff is good but where do you draw the line at to be like okay enough is enough or maybe maybe yeah. maybe we have to leave they want us to leave but they don't want us to leave because we're the biggest consumers it's 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 a mind bug <laughs> and like we were talking about the other day it was like we don't believe that the level of racism has risen or decreased over the years. We think that there's just a blanket level of racism that's always going to remain. Yeah. But the fact that when Trump was in office, he made them so comfortable yeah. to be outwardly mm -hmm. racist. Yeah. To the point where... You can be racist without consequences. Without consequences. Yeah. I mean, even when it comes to like news outlets and articles that are shared on social media there is a whole different undertone when it comes to things that deal with black people and things that deal with white people when it's white people everybody wants to understand or want to figure out what had happened first when it's us automatically they ain't raised right mm -hmm. criminals drug yep. addicts yep. you know what i'm saying so the rhetoric and the undertone is so different I mean, I mean, since we on George Floyd, look at the case starting off with the case. What they said is pretty much he had meth. I can't know. Meth. Said. Yeah, meth in his system. What does that got to do with it? I don't care. It don't got nothing to do with an officer supposed to serve and protect. Got you on the ground. You saying I cannot breathe. You blaming the surroundings. You distracted. But I know you heard him. Not only did he hear him, he felt him. Yeah. But that's. Yeah, until I, I yeah here's the thing <laughs> and i said this a very long time ago until you start hitting them in their pension oh yeah it's the, not gonna it's stop the money yeah it's the money. money yeah because I, not I'm small real. money either not small no. money guys it, ha it has to hurt pension yeah if i go to my job tomorrow and i work in finance and i drain them dry and you mean to tell me I could go home on administrative leave mm -hmm. until y'all figure it out and I know what the outcome is going to be anyway? And it's going to be a, if I do serve some time, I'm probably going to be able to do it at home where I want to be anyway, mm -hmm. without working. Why, why wouldn't you? Right. You know, you have no incentive to be a better person if you know what the outcome of you doing wrong is already going to be. Exactly. So, I don't know how we got here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> The show. The show, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so Nova was putting together this march. Her, her and uh, what's the name? Reggie? Red? It's either Red or Reggie. I can't, I can't so remember. So yeah. they were getting the shirts together and whatnot, and she was explaining how she really thought that this was going to be very impactful for the children. And long story short, it ended up that Nova was not able to put on this children's march, but because they bucked with the permits. Mitts. We know that there was no misunderstanding. We know that she didn't do anything wrong. This is what happens when we try to organize and do things the correct way. They figure out a way to stop it. So if we do it outside of those parameters, they can come and do something about it. Mm -hmm. So they didn't They didn't um, release it. So over there at um, Ra and Dollar's house, they were down there, you know, getting their signs together. And Blue was asking signs about what does this mean? Where it was like he called for his mother. And I don't understand yeah. what that means. So they had to explain to him that in George Floyd's final moments and in his moments of distress, you usually call out to the thing that brings you the most comfort that makes mm -hmm. you feel the most safe. And in that moment, he called for his mom. For his mama that's not even that's here. That's not even here. here. Wow. And they were explaining to Blue that pretty much whenever you're in a position where you don't feel comfortable or safe, you need to call out to those people that can make you feel safe and whatnot. So then they ended up giving Blue the news that, you know, the march is gonna be half, you know, we're gonna have to put this off to another day because, you know, we, we can't organize the way that we want to because the permit Miss. won't allow us to all gather together and protest in the street and they got Blue voices said you heard. Need a permit to stand in the street? But the way he said it, I was like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. it don't make no sense. He said, that's a dumb rule. So Ralph Edger was like, you know what, Blue? That is a dumb rule. Yeah. You know what we're going to do? Me, <laughs> you, and your mama, we're going to go out there with our signs, and we're going to make our voices heard. Dollar was looking like, ho, 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 yeah, now. I hear you. You know, we, <laughs> yeah. Don't take my son out there and have him in the boo. Because I actually thought he was, they was actually going to the streets to the streets, and I was like, 
That's what I thought. I thought yeah. it was going to the streets to the streets, yeah. too. We're going to move forward with that storyline because that really just... They was on the, They were actually on their property. On like their my own husband said. property, man. So I said, thank you, Raw, for really thinking forward with that. Yeah. Being on your property, you can do whatever you want to do. So they got and the signs out. they didn't even out. matter. It really did It didn't even matter. And you go, got the cars honking as they go by in support of what it is. But somebody called the police, or so he says. There ain't nobody he called the police. Just he probably just saw them and rolled up. Yeah. He's, yeah. And told him, said, listen, um... We heard that there was some Black Lives Matter twirlers out here that's causing havoc with the traffic. Ain't nobody causing no havoc with no traffic. It pretty much was like, where's your permit? You doing this on public property? And Rob was like, this ain't public property. Where you are is public. Where I'm at is private. Right. And I own it. I own all this. So then he goes, so, what? Prove it. Prove it. So Rob says, so people so just walk, walk around, around with their D's in their pocket? It was like, well, where's your ID? He's back there at the house. He was like, oh, so I'm supposed to believe that you own that house too, right? See, mm -hmm. whoosa, whoosa. So you know what? Dollar was scared the hell out of me because she started running to the truck. And I said, no, 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 that's what you don't do. Hmm. Don't start running. Don't do no sudden moves like a pit bull. You can't do no sudden moves or they'll latch. So she runs to the truck and she told, don't worry about it. I'm going to go to the house. And I'm going to go ahead and get what you need to show this officer that we supposed to be here, whatever. Officer looks down at her. Well, she ain't got no butt. But <laughs> yeah. he looked down at her butt and was like, mm. Mm. you know what he's doing right. He's trying to add. That's why I'm ready to say he's trying he tr he try his best. So I, I appreciate Ralph holding, you know, sustaining himself, even though you, you could tell he wanted to, like, go upside his head. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So shout out to Ralph for that, you know, good example <laughs> uh, for, for all of us, you know, brothers. Yeah. If we face that. So he's pretty much trying to get Raw to do something so that he will have a justifiable, justifiable reason, reason to, to retaliate. retaliate on him. Yep. And he's saying things like, that's your boy. Mm -hmm. Good to meet you. And then when the altercation had kind of got to a head, where he was like, y'all people, y'all Black Lives Matter twirlers, and y'all don't, oh, y'all got a lot of mouth, and this, that, and the third. And then he looks at Blue and was like, I'll see you later. Almost like that down payment thing. Yeah. So he ended up, the officer ended up getting a call over the radio, and he was like, it must that, be your lucky day. That's how we know he won't call there. That's the proof. So... Dollar wasn't able to get back before this exchange was over. By the time she probably got back, the officer was already gone. But Blue is sitting there traumatized. Traumatized. Yeah, he, yeah. Because one, he's just gotten the black boy talk. Mm -hmm. Then if he, he's, he's put in it. He's put in it. In it. Yeah. And he's able to feel what it feels like to not be a safe black boy. Even on your own property. Right. So Ralph Angel was like, you know what, Blue? We still going to do what we came out here to do. And start shouting, no justice, no peace, Black Lives Matter. And Blue is so broken, he couldn't even do it. Nope. He couldn't even muster it up. And Ralph Angel just got tears just flowing. And I'm like, oh my yeah. God. So let's Cause, go. Because it hurts to be in a position where you know you being disrespected. But you can't do nothing. And yeah, and you have to sit there and take it. You yeah. have to turn the other cheek. Yeah, it's demeaning. Yeah, yeah, because y'all, you know, pr brothers' pride, man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and your ego. Well, just a man in general. You. Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, we hate to be disrespected, and that's and that's exactly what he did. He kept doing it. He kept doing it. He kept doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's go over there to Unvi House. She got a lot going over over at her. Oh house, right? yeah, man. I'm worried about Hollywood, man. I'm definitely worried about Wood. Yeah. So she ends up going over there to Charlie's house and was speaking to Charlie about some things. And she verbalized that the fact that, you know, Hollywood is going through a lot since his mm -hmm. mom died. And, you know, things just ain't the way that they used to be. And she don't know whether or not to. And that's that's one thing where you see somebody in this really delicate space. You don't know if you give them the time to work through it and come back out themselves. Or is there a time to be like. Okay, something needs to be done because 
you're about to go over into the deep end and he's drinking a lot of beer. He's drinking beer at breakfast. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that ain't Hollywood. Like, for real, for real. So, over at the house, you know, she's trying to speak to Hollywood like she normally would. And all of his answers are whatever. Whatever you feel like it. Just let me watch the game. Like, it's very blunt, cold, matter of fact. Like, he's not being disrespectful, but he's not being Hollywood. Yeah. So, you know, there even came a time where him and Mr. Prosper were sitting on the sofa watching the game. And his interaction went by in front and of Mr. Prosper. Mr. Prosper put up that Baptist finger like that. He's like, it's like oh, yeah, that's swing, y'all. And I got to go. But I could feel that because that, that, that's, that's real. That's a reality, man, during the pandemic. I'll tell you one thing. You found out if you really love the person you with during the pandemic. And even was, that sometimes was challenging. Because, <laughs> you know, y'all so used to leaving the house in the morning and coming back and see, seeing each other in the evening. And now it's like all day, every day. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing I like you, Mike. It's a good thing I like you too, but we don't have moments too. Yeah, we have moments. Well, we yeah. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. He'll be like, did I do something wrong? Well, she said, she be, stay over she there. She be saying I'm too clingy. Stanley is very clingy. Y'all see that all the time. But now, see, y'all don't see, see Lynette acts just like a cat. See, a cat will come around and they want to be pet and they purr. <laughs> all right. And then she, leave me alone. I won't be bothering them. I'll say, okay. Then I give her a space. Stanley! <laughs> Stanley! What? Come on. What you doing? <laughs> yeah, so. I am a cat. She, she, she didn't think I caught on to So when I try to give her a space, she called my name. And then when I come and spend some time, you know, like the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. But anyway. So Nova. Did I finish with Hollywood now? Oh, so Hollywood, um... Vi did end up, you know, confronting him a little bit about, you know, just how is he doing? Like, you need yeah. to slow your roll. You know, what's going on with you? And um, that really didn't get to him. Mr. Prosper speaking to him and told him, listen, I don't know what's going on between you and Vi, but if you don't have a happy wife, <laughs> you ain't got no happy. Yeah. You ain't going to be happy. So you got to figure it out. So you see him started to reflect on all those good things and yeah. how he was before the pandemic and before his mom passed and all of that. So we don't actually see him get it together, but we see a lot of reflection. Yeah. So then we go over there to Nova. Nova is taking, um, I guess say her um, stepdaughter, but it ain't a stepdaughter yet, I guess. <laughs> um, back to her apartment in Austin, Texas, I think it was. And... I still don't trust the daughter, but she's she's growing on me just a little bit. Yeah. So um, the daughter actually was gifted a book from Nova. What was it called? Vision and Justice. Justice. No. And the daughter has picked up on the vibe that Nova is trying with her, but she's not all the way there. And the girl was like, you know what? You don't have to take this road trip with me and my dad to take me back. You know, I, I, I understand and I get it. And Nova was telling her, no, it's not that I'm not open to you. Mm -hmm. It is not that I'm not open to formulating things with you. We just have to grow and evolve. And right now, it's yeah. really a hard time right. for us because your viewpoints and your experiences are not my mm -hmm. viewpoints and experiences. And even when we have some of the same viewpoints, my experience and your experience is totally, totally different. different. So you're not able to relate to when I'm saying things or reacting the way that I am because you haven't felt the mental trauma that I felt behind that thing. So they eventually ended up going, um, getting in the car to go and she let her know that, listen, the children's march is off because of the permits. And the little girl, well, whatever her name is, I can't think of her name right now, um, Courtney. Courtney, yeah. Courtney said, you know what, maybe it's for the best that things didn't pan out. You got all these children that are being exposed to all these evils. And, you know, maybe it's just time to let a kid be a kid. See, that is her not having our experience. experience right. Because she, she, well, she don't realize the kids are already there. Yeah, they can't be kids. Yeah. <laughs> so she meant well, but because you don't have our experience, you're speaking from a place of innocence. 
Yeah. Where we're already speaking from a place of experience. Mm -hmm. So she realized when she said that, that she had bucked up with Nova a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she ended up telling Nova, you know, I just feel like I'm a bad person. Like, I don't get it. And Nova said, I want you to always feel uncomfortable right there. Because that's the way that you grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you don't understand, it makes you learn and research and actually, you know, be a great ally for us. Mm -hmm. And so I think she gets it. But Nova ended up flying back home without Calvin because I was so confused. Yeah, because who was like, what, where Calvin at? Yeah, I was confused. Yeah, because like, she, she started out? having, the, you know, the, 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 uh, reflection. the reflection and stuff. I was like... Yeah, then like, oh yeah, Calvin, yeah, she flew back. <laughs> yeah, so she flew back and, you know, now she's really, we saw a whole lot, of, like my husband said, a lot of reflecting on how they first started and some of the things that they've had to work through because y'all already know, he was married, yep. police officer, nobody in the family really accepted her mm -hmm. at first. Um, and then she's this black power person. Yeah, and you so know, at first he, he couldn't even couldn't even roll with her. Yeah. Like some stuff he had not. Yeah, he yeah. couldn't. And he couldn't. He couldn't. He just wouldn't. So, and she even was with that whole thing of how do I fight black but sleep white? white? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it either. Yeah, but I know. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't. Um, and I'm willing to listen uh, yeah, I'm and learn yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and get it. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Because I understand that. that love is love and sometimes you just can't help whose heart you fall in love with. But I, I don't understand And, and let that. me put this plug right here. We're not saying anything about interracial relationships. Oh, yeah. I told you my sister was white. Yeah, we, we love who you <laughs> I love. I talked to her, but I talked to my what, brother. <laughs> what, 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 what you speaking of is when you're an activist like Noble. Yeah. How do you, yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, because... It, it not only are you always in this fight, you're always in a fight too, but internally I, but with, with your I, home life. Me, speaking from no, not having no experience and don't know anything, I think that person would have to be, be in the fight with yeah, you. He had to be committed just, just as much as Noble. Yeah. And I don't think Calvin is there yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's not there yet. Like they have to be like minded. Yeah. And I don't know if Calvin is there. Yeah. I, so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, hope y'all understood that right. If y'all must misunderstand me, y'all want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to throw that plug in there, Mike. So, I don't know if she's about to break up with Calvin. I really hope she does it. Because I think Calvin is in a delicate position as well. He can't help what he has not experienced. Right. But he's I, will I think he's willing to... To learn? To learn. I mean, he's already open to it. I, I just don't think that sometimes we, I think sometimes we're unfair. Sometimes we want people to feel and be as angry as we are, but they haven't had that experience. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, and I th and, and I, I would say I think we do respect, you know, our Caucasian and brothers, sisters, the ones that are fighting for us. Right. Uh, I don't expect for them to understand. There's no right. way. Right. There's no you way can. for yeah. There's no way for you to understand my struggle if you're not me. So you could never be black. Right. It's just it's just the ones that act like it does not exist. Boom. That no, it's, ain't nothing racist. Ain't nothing wrong with Trump. Ain't nothing wrong with this. And it's like right in your face. But like, I do understand that when you're you know privileged in this country, you have uh, how can I say it? You have the ability to put on blinders, even though you see it. You know right. because it don't affect you. And 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 then when we talk about it. And you tell me that I don't see what I see or feel what I feel or experience what that's I experience. That's what piss you off. And that's what make you mad. Um, Because, you know, you go out in public, you can see it. Every time. Hell yeah. Every time. Every time. Yep. So. I, I, uh, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. And you just get sick and tired of that you have to water down your blackness so you won't appear to be a threat. Right. Right. And I know if you, if you know, your brother, sister, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And I always remember, um, shout out to Mike B, Mike B watching, although he's not on YouTube anymore. I remember when, um, I think it was when Trump first got into office and he did a video about how he feels as being a corporate black man. And you know, Mike B has locks. Yeah. And he said, whenever he goes into the office, he becomes relatable. He said, I put my glasses on. 
I make sure that my locks are in a nice tight um, ponytail tucked away like this real neat because I don't want to be a threat yeah. to people that I roll up on because they see this big black man with, with these dread. locks. Yeah. He says, so I make myself corporate ready so that you don't feel as threatened by me. And it shouldn't be that way. And I was like, and my B is one of the way. most gentle giants you yep. will ever want to meet. Mm -hmm. But the sight of him intimidates people. Yeah. And he has to consciously make sure that he is as less threatening yeah, to people I, and as I have possible. To, and y'all know I'm a nice guy. And, Run around and he laughing and smile. And I still, I still make sure that, you know, it sucks. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that I get back home alive to my wife. That's all I'm concerned with in my family. That's it. Yeah, so it... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It really does suck that you have to think about all of those things. Yeah. Just Why to, can't you just be? Just be. And, and enjoy your life. And and everybody respect that. That's it. Yeah. So we're going to get on and we're going to um, end this. I told you I won't be here long. And we've been <laughs> yeah. talking for yeah. a while. <laughs> um, like we said, we saw that Charlie was having some issues and whatnot. So Charlie started having um, a conversation and she was still dealing with the fact that she's trying to stop these highways and all this stuff. Long story short, Micah had found some information on some microfish. I said, God, don't when that's over. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's what, the 90s? No. Or oh, 80s? Mm, 2000s? It's definitely 80s. 80s? It may be some in the 90s too. But he found some microfish and on the microfish, it has said that if there is like a global pandemic or something that happens worldwide, pretty much we can stall any projects for at least two, two years. years so that is what she's going to leverage off of to keep everything at bay for at least two years but while she's on this phone you can tell that she is something going on yeah like she's buckled over i mean buckled over she can't breathe hardly you know she's really trying to get it together she gets on the sofa and she grabs her phone to go call some people she realized boom nova is in austin Boom, on Vice said she already got some stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So I can't call her. So she called Ra. Ra's phone going answer. the regular voice. I said, every time Charlie needs somebody. Nobody answered the phone. Ain't nobody there for Charlie. And she had to revert to calling who? Dave Swish. <laughs> and Out of answered, all, the, all the people she did not want to call. She ended up calling Davis Swish. And he picked up that phone and she said, I'm sorry to call you, but I'm not feeling well. And it went off like that. And I said, are they I said, Ava, I said, uh, uh, don't y'all um, write Charlie out here getting COVID. Uh, I don't think you do because Charlie is a vital part of the, of the show. So I don't think they're going to do I mean, that. even if she get it, she's probably going to survive. But um, I don't know because... Her symptoms weren't one of those forefronting symptoms of COVID. They're not being able to breathe. But she, she wasn't able to breathe because she was in pain. Not because she just couldn't breathe. Hmm. So we'll see though. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see yeah. next week. So we can sit here and argue semantics all night long yeah. about the symptoms. And then somebody had let me know, um, and if this is true, oh my God, um, prayers towards um, Charlie. I can't think of her real name. Um, but they said she suffered a miscarriage during the filming of this season. Yeah. So that's horrible. So we should definitely yeah. have our love and support with that. Yes, that's, indeed. That's hard. Yeah. Um, I, I can only imagine. So, and then I thought they was going to mm. write that into the play, too. And I was like, well, who she don't have sex with? The, the, the Boudreaux dude. What Boudreaux? Yeah. She had sex with him, did she? I thought she did. When he was drinking that brown liquor. I, Didn't it? I don't remember. Do y'all remember when they were drinking? What, what a Manuel he kept, or whatever his name is, McQuail. What a name? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hell, <laughs> get Maury on the case. <laughs> Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla, boo.